Hi everyone and uh, welcome back to the cockpit project and uh, in this part we're going to start cutting out the um, throttle arm that we designed in the last video and did the cam for. So we're going to get straight underway. First tool path we're going to run is essentially just to put two 4mm holes actually into the bed or um, spoil board on our machine just so that we can attach some uh, posts which can essentially be cut out drill bits anyway. Um, and when we flip the part over, because we're doing two-sided machining, we can ensure that the zero in the y-axis is in the same place. Okay, with that out of the way, we uh, then essentially just do drilling again, same feet and speeds. Uh, I did the feet and speeds for aluminium, so there's no need to change them for wood, essentially. And we do them into the actual aluminium plate itself, plus an extra hole where I've got a, uh, a set screw, if you like, or, or a bolt that's going to actually attach the axle, or at least tighten the axle, into the throttle arm. Okay, and then uh, next up, we're going to look at... Uh, cutting out with a 6mm 3 flute rougher that's got like a serrated edge to break the chips up um, on the flutes itself and we're going to do some of the deepest well certainly the deepest I've ever been with a 6mm uh, cutter which is 10mm depth of cut here using adaptive I mean the adaptive tool sets are absolutely brilliant because they let you use the full length of the flute which means you're wearing your tool evenly all the way across its length rather than just on the tip. And um, there's some squeaking as you can probably hear when it goes around some corners. Uh, now, I'm not quite sure what that is. It usually means that I'm about to get chip weld, but as you can see here, the spray of chips coming out there is absolutely fantastic. And in fact, if I was doing a, a slot cut like this before, um, using a kind of standard tool path this would have taken probably three or four passes with ramps in between because uh, I'd only be going kind of two to three mil depth of cut um, probably two actually in something like this and um, would have taken for forever <laughs> whereas this is absolutely stunning um, there's me being a bit OCD with the uh, air gun there blowing the chips out of the slot but it's always best to get the chips out because nothing ruins your day faster than essentially work hardened aluminium being recut and I've had more mishaps if you like machining where I've had recut chips welding themselves to the end of the tool than I have in uh, perhaps you know um, putting the wrong feeds and speeds into the uh, into the tool path in the first place. So this is going really well. And um, you can see we're out of the kind of strat, uh, slotting tool path, if you like, and we're going into the uh, more pocketing side of things. And interestingly enough, the um, you know noises, the squeaking noises, uh, which are quite disturbing, seem to be only occurring in certain parts of the aluminium. So there could be a number of re reasons for this. One is, um, uh, as one um, useful guy on the my CNC forms has pointed out, there could be some movement actually in the spoil board itself, or there could actually be impurities within the actual aluminium plate. Unfortunately, the aluminium plate we get in the UK uh, isn't always the best quality, and you can get um, like areas in a plate which are harder or softer uh, than, than the surrounding area which means your feet and speeds go slightly off and um, you know you end up with um, not generally a, a, an accident but um, you end up with something that's not optimal.
Now, as you can see, we're getting the main bulk of the material um, out of the uh, block now, and um, it's running really well. In fact, I was really impressed with this. You know, a 10 mil depth of cut on a 6 mil cutter is usually a, a horrendous no-no, and um, nope, we're we're coping fine with it. Okay, next toolpath up is uh, essentially a cleaning toolpath and you can hear from the horrendous sounds uh, when that ball nose cutter is at the bottom edge, so here, and you can actually see there was some weld thrown off the end of the tool there. Um, the, the feed and speeds, uh, there's something a little bit amiss with them, I must go back and check them. Um, for the rest of it, it seems to run really well, you can see a good spray of chips coming up, but for some reason at the uh, beginning of that there's almost like a um, a slot cut with the ball nose cutter into the um, into that bottom part of the interface ramp if you like I must check that out I mean no harm no foul it hasn't ruined the part uh, it was just a bit disconcerting and I always seem to have problems with ball nose cutters I don't know quite what it is um, but um, yeah something to be worked on Okay, next up, um, right now that ball nose finishing pass is finished, um, is we're going to take a 4mm three flute rougher, and again this is another tool I've had problems with in the past, um, generally where I've been running it too slow at about 24,000 RPM, which is the maximum my spindle will go up to, and I've upped the feed rate a little bit here, um, and then of course it's slowed down because what I'm actually doing here is a 5mm uh, depth of cut which again for a 4 mil cutter is pretty um, severe and uh, this is probably coping even better than the 6 mil tool I was using in the initial uh, adaptive tool path so I was quite happy with this one and it's uh, running really well again being OCD with the uh, air gun there just to make sure the chips are all clear especially when you're cutting into tighter pockets like this because you tend to end up with a nice pool of chips stuck in one corner um, and the other thing is you know, when you're using essentially a misting uh, coolant like I am here that tends to make the chip sticky as well which can actually hamper um, your um, you know chip clearing and you kind of uh, it's counterintuitive you know <laughs> you should, it, although it's good to have the cooling on the tool to keep um, keep it uh, keep it cold uh, in essence it's better actually to clear the chips with the air than it is perhaps to cool the tool because if your feeds and speeds are correct those chips should be carrying the heat of the cut away with them rather than it building up in the tool or in the actual workpiece at least that's the thing
Okay, uh, we just done the uh, countersinks there as well, which are on the end of this toolpath. And we've gone in and you can see what it's also doing here is it's starting to clear up some of the uh, lateral material, or is it radial? Yes, radial material I've left on the um, toolpath, the previous toolpath essentially from the six mil cutter. Anyway, we're coming to the end of this toolpath, it's quite long, and we then just uh, doing some two and a half mil peck drilling, as you can see there, uh, which is for some locating holes around the periphery of the actual throttle body itself, um, so it kind of doesn't twist on the uh, lever, which it shouldn't do anyway, because you've got three bolts, uh, should hold it quite rigid. Um, but there you go, now two and a half mil, again I had a bit of, um, that's the first time I've done this, seemed to work okay, um, actually the, come off, anyway, um, here if you've seen the previous video, this is, uh, now what are we doing here, oh no we're doing some countersinks with a four mil, um, rougher again and but this time I was using a bore toolpath and I didn't like this because essentially it was plunging right at the beginning of that ramp spiral ramp um, which was stressing the tool tip out quite a lot um, so I've actually changed that now to an adaptive and it does a ramp from above the aluminium into the material and it's a lot gentler Now we've got a quick bit of drilling to um, put some 6mm holes through uh, to the other side and that's meeting the countersinks on the other side. And uh, then we've got a quick bit of chamfering to do on those holes just to pretty them up a bit and then we come to a bit of a disaster. Now this is an 8mm um, 3 flute rougher. First time I used the tool uh, I went pretty aggressive on it and I was going for a 15mm um, depth of cut. Now according to the G-Wizard software which I use for feeds and speeds using high speed machining um, this should cope quite admirably but um, when this started cutting uh, at full depth which it does any minute now you can actually see the bed starting to move there as it's cutting and what that's actually doing um, from a bit of analysis I've done with the guys over at the CNC forum is that's probably pulling the material deeper if you like into the cut which means it's going out of tolerance for the uh, step over it's actually taking more than 3.2 millimeters anyway um, because I needed to get this out of the um, and get this you know piece finished I then reverted to a 6 mil tool so that I could uh, you know trust the feeds and speeds and the recipe I was using and this is the same recipe I used for the roughing on the um, on the other side so we knew it was going to work and you can see this is going to proceed nicely anyway back to that 8 mil cutter um, disaster now I'm going to run some tests with the same feeds and speeds but I think what I'm going to try is I'm going to try it in a block of material um, held in a machine vise uh, which will be bolted down directly onto the bed of the machine so that's the actual aluminium bed that sits underneath this spoil board. Um, now if that's not rigid enough then uh, I need to back off the um, step over now, I've had a, there's a very kind gentleman on um, my CNC forums, guy goes by the name of Jazz CNC, who ran essentially some similar feeds and speeds up in iMachining, which is a SolidWorks add-on. 
that's extremely expensive um, but it actually has a better featured in my opinion uh, adaptive clearing stroke trachoidal toolpath routine in it um, and what it allows you to do is it allows you just to set with a slider the amount of aggressiveness if you like you're going to use in your adaptive uh, toolpath and he I think it's got eight levels and on level three and four which is what he normally um, uses and he's a very experienced um, CNC machine builder and machinist full stop has been in the industry a very long time um, helped me design this machine uh, originally um, he uses a, a three or four aggressiveness whereas the this the eight mil tool path you just see saw go wrong that was um probably up around the seven or eight in terms of aggressiveness so i was pushing too hard but interestingly enough the the uh, amount of um uh, power I was using on the spindle according to the uh, G Wizard um, calculator, feed and speed calculator, should have been probably about half the capability of what this spindle is actually capable of. So, you know, this is a 2.2 kilowatt spindle, and I think it's about 0.8 of a kilowatt that it would use. So, yeah, anyway, well, I think we need to do some more testing on that because the 8mm tool actually survived and largely that's because when it rammed it into the machine after the spindle had stopped spinning, it actually <laughs> moved the bed and the part out of the way. It did mean I had to re-zero everything when I restarted this tool path, uh, but we kind of got away with it. Anyway, onwards. Right, so cutout occurred without any drama, and really the only thing now to do is run that ball nose, uh, six mil ball nose round the edge there, just to put that little round over fillet on the on the edge of the piece. Um, that doesn't take a huge amount of time to do. It runs pretty quickly. It's only taking uh, about 0.2 of a mil, I think, each time, and probably similar in. Uh, in kind of step over terms I think it was so um, I could probably do that you know with a file or a piece of emery cloth to be honest but uh, it, it's um, you know a chance to practice with the ball nose tools which I don't use a great deal uh, and I should do because I need to get the recipes sorted out um, I've always had trouble when I've used them and there we go that's nearly it and we're nearly done <laughs> Not as uh, pretty as I was expecting it to be, but we have got one arm. It's nicely pocketed on the inside. We've got a channel down the middle for our wires, and we've got a hole at the end for the um, for the axle. So I'm going to have to do a bit of manual cleanup, but might even give it a sandblast. Not bad. Right, there's our arm, um, and it's looking pretty good. The fit's almost perfect. Um, you do a couple of bits of adjustment on the model, uh, if I do another one. But uh, no, for what I need, it's absolutely stunning. And uh, better get on with the rest of it. So. The next thing we need to do is a new mounting plate which is going to allow this arm if you like to sit in the chassis and we need to get the axis in and then we need to uh, start the wiring up and get the whole thing assembled. 
So thanks for watching as ever and I will see you in the next video of this series.